My topic is on etiology of toxic anterior segment syndrome or TAS in short. First the definition. It is an acute postoperative inflammatory reaction in which a non-infectious substance enters the anterior segment of the eye and induces toxic damage to the intraocular tissue. It varies in intensity depending on the type and duration of the toxin. Most of the cases occur after uneventful cataract surgery and more recently after fecic intraocular lens implantation. It was previously called sterile endophthalmitis or postoperative uveitis of unknown cause. A condition previously termed toxic endothelial cell destruction syndrome is now believed to be a variant of TAS. Distinguishing TAS from infectious endothelitis is very important. However, this can be difficult. This can be, this will be uh, dealt with in more details by Dr. Mighty. Now the incidence. There are uh, several studies. In one study, Ocelic et al. reported an incidence of 0.8% at their institution during an 18 month period. There are different studies regarding etiology. Uh, some studies which found uh, different etiology are Unal et al. described a cluster of six cases of tests attributed to glutaraldehyde residue uh, on instruments. All six eyes develop corneal edema and five of them ultimately required penetrating keratoplasty. Glaucoma surgery was necessary in two cases. Warner et al. reported a cluster of eight test cases caused by antibiotic steroid ointment. Three of the eight cases required keratoplasty. Glaucoma surgery was necessary in one. Buzzard et al. reported two cases of corneal endothelial decompensation attributable to the use of uh, generic tripe and blue. Now let's come to the pathophysiology. The histopathological uh, hallmark is toxic anterior damage with cellular necrosis <coughs> and or apoptosis and extracellular damage resulting in the severe acute inflammatory response. Corneal, corneal endothelium is often the most damaged structure because of its inability to regenerate. Toxic agents specifically induce the acute breakdown of endothelial junction with loss of barrier function. Remaining viable cells migrate and spread over the damaged areas to maintain the endothelial pump. But if significant damage occurs, the viable cells are not able to compensate the loss and there is permanent corneal edema. Clavicular mesura of damage can also develop, resulting in decreased drainage, scarring and peripheral anterior sinica formation and ultimately rise of intraocular pressure. Now, what are the sources of these toxic agents? First of all, extraocular substances that inadvertently enter the anterior chamber during or after surgery, like topical antiseptic agents like betadine, talc from surgical gloves, and ophthalmic ointments. Next, the products that are introduced into the anterior chamber as a part of the procedure, like anesthetic agents, intraocular medications like antibiotics in the irrigating solution or intracameral antibiotics, preservatives like benzalkonium chloride, inappropriately reconstituted intraocular preparations, mitomycin C, the intraocular lenses themselves, particularly fecic eyewells, contaminated irrigating solutions like balanced salt solution contaminated with bacterial endotoxin or solutions with abnormal pH, osmolarity or ionic <coughs> composition. Corneal toxicity will be associated with concentration of free radicals present in the agents also. Next, contaminant, contaminants on the surfaces of the intraocular surgical instruments as a consequence of ina inadequate or inappropriate instrument cleaning. First of all, inadequately clean instruments retaining blood or other tissues 
rust, cotton fibers, reuse of disposables, and detergents. This is a case of mild test, first day post operative post op after uh, uncomplicated phaco immunosuppression surgery, and look look what we have found: a cotton fiber in the pupillary area. Now, like the uncanny smile of the Cheshire cat uh, in Alice in Wonderland, you know which remains even after the cat disappears. The bacterial endotoxins persist. Even after destruction of gram-negative bacteria after autoclaving, its stable lipopolysaccharide endotoxins from bacterial cell walls may remain attached to the instruments. And bacterial endotoxins may also contaminate ultrasound water bath cleaners. There are other culprits also, like oxidized metal deposits and residues that may form on reusable tubing and metal halves of cannulas when gas sterilization is used, or impurities of autoclave steam, and last but not the least, residual or denatured viscosurgical devices.